Have you ever wondered how games use a seed to generate the same world each time? It's actually really easy, and I'm going to show you how to do that today. This tutorial is just going to be focused on making sure that your random number of generation is the same for each seed. It's not actually going to cover a random generation of a world. So I'm going to assume that you're going to either learn to do that separately or you have a randomly generating world and you want to add seeds to it. So to do it, I'm just going to do a very simple example where I grab six runes and I put get user seed to generate the same six runes each time. To do this, I'm going to use the Kenny rune pack and this is a free download. So if you want to do the same thing I've done in the tutorial, you can just go to his website and download them. So first off, I'm just going to set up the scene so that I have my runes that I can generate randomly. I'm going to set all of my runes here that I've already put into the project. Sprites. I'm going to add a UI image. I'm going to set this canvas, screen space camera, and use the main camera. I'm going to go and grab the empty room and put it into the sprite. I'm going to hit preserve aspects. And now what I'm going to do is place a number of these across the middle so that I have five or six of them. I'm going to set the background of my camera to a solid color. And turn it to black. And I'm also going to make a button to generate based on a new seed and an input field to put the new seed into. I'm just going to set the content type to integer number because we're only going to have integers. Now I have my scene set up, let's actually write the script to make this work. To do this I'm going to make a folder for my scripts. And I'm just going to create a new script called Generate. I'll go with Generate Runes. Let's double click to open this in Visual Studio. I'm not going to need our update function, so you can delete that. And let's add the UI library and also add the Text Mesh Pro library. First thing we're going to need is our variable for our seed, and we're just going to use integers. Next, we're going to need all of the sprites that are possible for the runes. And we're also going to need all the images that we're going to put those sprites into. Finally, we're going to need the input field so that we can get this new seed number from the input field. Now in the start, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to update the input field with any number that we've already got inside seed number. Now I'm going to write a function to set the runes. And we're just going to call this function when it starts, just so that the first seed that we have will automatically load. Now I'm just going to put some debug logs in here, just so that when we run this, that we can see what's happening. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our seed number equal to whatever is in our input field. Now because the input field is text, it's a string, even though we've set it to integer only, the integer only just refers to the input that you put into it, not the type. So you still have to pass it here to, make, to get it into an integer. 
Now the next thing, and this is where really all of the magic happens. So I'm going to go random. Oh, and it state. And we're going to put our seed number in now. Now what this does is it essentially starts the sequence of your random numbers. And now this number that you pick it will have the same sequence of random numbers that come back after each time you call random. And a different seed will give you a different sequence. So essentially you just need to in your project call this with your seed number and then just run through all your random functions. And so long as they all run in the same order, you'll get the same result every time. But this will allow you to be able to do this with any seed number and get a completely different random result. And so to show this works, I'm just going to set up each of the rooms with one of these random numbers that we generate. So to do this, I'm going to use a for loop and we're going to loop through all of the images. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm, well, you, I might not necessarily take these two steps if I wasn't doing it in the tutorial and I do them all in a single line, but I actually want to debug each random number we get out. So I'm first of all going to get a random number. I'm going to put it into a, a variable. I'm going to use random.range. And we're going to go from zero to the length of our sprite rooms. I'm now going to debug this so that we can actually see the number that comes out just to make it really clear that the sequence is the same. And then finally we're going to put use this random room to set the sprite on the image. Now let's save this and go give it a try. I'm just going to add my generate rune script to the canvas. I'm going to hit the lock here so that I, when I go to other things, it won't change. And I'm going to grab all of the images and drag those into the image rooms. I'm going to go down to my sprites. And I'm going to grab all the sprites except for the last one because it's blank and drop them into the sprite runes. I'm going to start off with a random seed and I'm going to drop the input field in here. I'm now going to turn off the lock. And I'm going to go to the button and on click the canvas in here. Go to generate runes and hit set runes. I'm just going to open up the console here. Let's hit play. And you can see that based on 4334, it's generated these runes. And you can see the numbers here are 11, 5, 25, 8, 16, and 30. I hit generate again. You'll see that I get the same sequence of numbers here, which gives me the same runes. But if I change this number just by one, I get six different runes in a completely different sequence. If I change it back to the previous sequence, I'll get the same sequences up here. And that's really all there is to using a seed to generate your own world. And then you can just be as imaginative as you want. You can use it for everything from generating huge worlds to I've seen a lot of people use this to generate like those challenges of a day. So when you see the challenge of the day, it's randomly generated based on the seed. And they'll often use the date as the seed. And then that will mean that everybody gets the same random challenge on the same day. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. And if you did, please like, subscribe or comment. I also have a link tree of all my different things. I have a Discord where you can come and talk to me if you want to have more of a chat about game development. And I hope you're enjoying your game development.